I just visited the biggest and best antique motorcycle junkyard in the country and came home with an absolutely epic haul. I'm talking tanks. So nice. I'm talking wheels, exhaust, seats. You guys are not gonna believe the pile of stuff that we just bought. Even pulled out a brand new project for right here in the Wheels Through Time Restoration Shop. Incredibly stoked. The Antique Motorcycle Meet in Wauseon, Ohio. It's put on by the Antique Motorcycle Club of America every year. It's the biggest, in my opinion, the best antique bike meet anywhere. Parts, pieces, motorcycles, history, all piled onto one fairgrounds in Wauseon, Ohio, a tiny little town. And uh, today we're going over some of these epic pieces uh, that we brought back from the meet, guys. I mean, the best haul that I've ever had at Wauseon. Uh, projects, as you can imagine, we got dozens of projects here inside the museum. I got parts for the 39. I got parts for next year's raffle bike. Unbelievable stuff. The best piece is still in the truck. So guys, check these out. <laughs> these are insane. So, I know you guys probably saw like a month ago, a month and a half ago, uh, the Rhino Bag Show. We've got them covered a set of ultra rare 19 Harley, 1939 Harley Davidson deluxe bags. I was telling you it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to find a set of bags like that. This is two sets in a month, guys. Un freaking believable. I'm going to tell you the story about how these came to be uh, real shortly, but 1939 only. You can see that grain in there. God, these are so rare. Just awesome. Now, these have been restored. So all original stuff up here, and they've put on new straps. These things always break. Uh, they put on the new white tassels. Uh, this would have been white from the factory. So these things, believe it or not, and they've got all the old cracking, one old repair there from the exhaust pipe. This is the antique motorcycle nerd stuff that we just flip out over, guys. I've never even been a saddlebag guy. Like, all of my bikes are stripped and bare bones bikes. Found that set last month and flipped my lid and never thought I would find another pair and these things popped up. Uh, <sighs> unbelievable. I put them in the front seat so I could stare at them all the way home. It's an eight hour drive and I wasn't looking at the road as much as I should have been. So uh, we're gonna go through all these parts, guys, and then tell you about the next project here at Wheels Through Time. Super cool deal. We're gonna do it as part of our Kickstart Challenge. Now, you guys remember the 1950 Panhead we just found, right? A Riviera Blue thing is killer. I found an ultra cool new piece for this. You guys remember we bolted on the saddlebags. Still looking for a seat, guys. Call me if you find a seat. I found this windshield at the swap meet and it is so cool. Riviera Blue, like lower there. Old AMA sticker. Beaded windshield peaked at the top. So this is like 1950s, perfect period correct actually got out on this thing at, at the meet and probably ran about 100 miles out and around Ohio uh, with some buddies. Perfect piece to finish it off. Stoked to add it to the bike. That thing's pretty much done unless we find a seat. It's going on display inside the museum. So guys, we're gonna dig through all of these parts. I'm not even kidding. The best haul that I've ever had in Wauseon. Found some incredible stuff. So the VL tanks here, 1930 to 36. Good shape, one big dent. Still got one of the caps. So these are going on a project. Uh, let's get some of this big stuff off the table. 1948 to 50 Harley Davidson gas tanks. These are in great shape. These are going on a 49 pan head. Another really special project that we're gonna be bringing you guys tons of programming on over the next six or eight months. So one of the best pieces, my friend Scott Larson. Uh, Scott's got great old motorcycle parts. And if you guys check it out, these are wheels, 18 inch, 418 tires for the 39 knuckles. So check this out, y'all, 1939. If you can't tell, I'm excited about this stuff, guys. Uh, this is like finds uh, of a lifetime, really. These are ultra hard to find. They're not just your regular 18 inch wheels. 1936 to 39, they had what we call a step hub. So the step hub gets its name from right in here. I don't know if you can see it, Steve. It's got this little ridge right um, on the left side of the hub there inside. and 
they only did that from 1936 to 39, and then in 40 they beefed it up. Um, these are super hard to find. Laced up, true, tires mounted, hubs rebuilt. He actually rebuilt these hubs, so these are ready to bolt on. We were having issues with the tires that are on the bike just because you're going to have to take them apart, relace the spokes, don't know what's inside the hubs, either one of them. The front one was the wrong hub in the first place. The rear hub was laced to a 16 inch, which is the wrong wheel altogether. So those right there are going to expedite the process and get this thing into good looking shape uh, very, very soon. So yeah, God, there's just parts everywhere. Original floorboards, new replacement rubbers. Those are going on a 38 knucklehead. Speaking of 38 knuckleheads, this stuff here, I mean, guys, this is impossible stuff to find. And uh, 38, 39 knucklehead, well, what actually what year it is. It doesn't have a date code, so it would probably be 1938 transmission case. Now, 38, 36, 7, 8, nine and maybe even a few more years uh didn't have a vent right here the whole transmission it's an enclosed setup there's got to be a vent somewhere the early ones they put the vent on the kicker cover so that's what this is the kicker cover is impossible to find hard enough as it is perfect transmission case it's never had a crack never had a repair it's been freshly bead blasted all the threads look good i mean these are the sorts of things that make building a bike that much easier they're hard enough parts to find repairing them is as difficult uh, as finding the parts oftentimes this stuff here is all i mean we need guts and that's it so 38 transmission that's going on another knucklehead project knucklehead axle it's going on the 47 and the guys when we're roaming looking for parts and looking for pieces in the back of your head, you've always got this destination for each of these parts that you're finding. You know, you go through the swap and say, oh, I need a rear axle for my 47. Boom, there it is. Shift knob, original knucklehead wiring harness. This came in a pile of stuff. I didn't even realize it was in there and the wiring's probably good enough to use, not on a bike you wanna ride every day, but good enough to use. Hollow axles, brake tensioners. Guys, in here there's piles of hardware. This stuff, again, all came as a larger pile of stuff that I bought. Um, pipes, I got two rad sets of pipes, guys. So this is a set of knucklehead high pipes. And these things are bad to the bone, man. Uh, I got these from my pal Matt McManus, and Matt's from Charlotte area, and these were on his knucklehead drag bike and his knucklehead drag bike was probably the baddest knuckle drag bike that I've seen. He was turning like 12 second quarter miles, beating V-rods uh, on a 47 knucklehead. These were the pipes on the bike. He since sold the bike, it's been rehomed. He ended up keeping the pipes, decided to sell them. I must have walked by these 10 times at the swap meet and finally talked myself into it and now we can get a little piece of uh, fast knucklehead action. Now, other exhaust pipes. This is actually an original 1947 knucklehead exhaust setup. Uh, super rare part, once in a lifetime find. It's been repaired uh, and re-welded, but this is maybe 1940 or 41 to 47. Guys looked their whole life for this sort of stuff. Uh, ended up turning one up uh, from my friend Patty Kramer. Patty was a Harley Davidson dealer uh, for years and years and years. Uh, shows up to all the antique bike meets, still buying and selling rare parts. Uh, really cool stuff. So, what else do we have here? Um, UL exhaust system reproduced. These are a header set up, everything but the muffler. That's going on your bike, Steve. So um, we're working on Steve's 44 flathead here, 80 cubic inch, four speed. This is gonna be upcoming project that we're uh, gonna be, you know, engines built. So right now we get to start on the final assembly stuff over the next month or two. We're gonna be bringing you guys programming on this bike. So we've got exhaust headers, boom. Using old ratty stuff, you got pinholes, you got rust, uh, that'll bolt right on and get us 
leaps and bounds ahead. So, uh, got other pieces. We got a Shebler carburetor. We got saddlebag toppers for the Rhino bags. So, guys, to reinforce these, they actually sit up top and give you kind of an even pinch. And you can see all the holes line up. Uh, really cool setup. You don't want to mount your bags without these. So, those are all done. Killer seed I got from Matt also, and I don't know who recovered it, but they did an ace job. This is a vented, so it's 1940, probably through the late 40s, even early 50s. Real nice leather. So um, probably going on the 38 with this stuff. Um, God, what else do we got? Oh, this is the box here. I'm gonna save that for last. Inside of this box, and this all came with uh, all came together, so pretty much everything in here, uh, all came from my buddy Chris Habit. Chris is from Michigan, showed up with the coolest knucklehead, said, hey man, I got a whole bin of parts from my 39. A lot of it's reproduced stuff, but it's stuff you can use, stuff for projects that you're working on at the museum. I wanna make you a good price on it, but here's the thing, you gotta tune my knucklehead. So I spent some time running around on his 41 knucklehead at the museum, dialing in the carburetor. Runs perfect. And uh, a lot of this stuff we may well end up using on that project. Springer fork, uh, top nuts, rare Harley brake light switch. These things used to be everywhere 10, 15 years ago. Now you're lucky to find one at a swap meet. Uh, wiring, plug wires, battery terminal kits, fender tabs, that's going on the next year's raffle bike. Um, chains, bushings, neat stuff. All right, now the good box. Yeah, I guess it's all good, but the best box. These. I'm not even kidding. It's hard for me to explain how excited I was when I found these. My friend Rod from Southern Illinois had these laying on his table and I probably stared at him for 20 minutes trying to talk myself out of it. These are 1930s, 40s Harley Davidson knucklehead, flathead, what we call Flanders handlebars. The Flanders bars are accessory bars. They did the rubber mounted risers, which leaves things a little bit loose here, but it's actually quite preferable. You just get less vibration. So the Flanders bars took your stock bars that were rigid mounted, dozen different bends or so. These are number zeros and they are the straightest, most cool old chrome number zero handlebars I've ever seen. Probably the best pair of Flanders bars. Got the spirals, got the cables. Those are going on the 38 right over there. Uh, high bars, I think they're going on the 38. Come check this out, y'all, I don't know. These, see I'm doing a bunch of dirty chrome on this bike, putting back together with original components. You've got an original headlight, the wheel's just a placeholder. So I got a nice old chrome rim for that. These here are like Hellings bars, ultra cool period uh, aftermarket stuff from the 50s. These are remade by my pal Tom. These are original. And I just can't tell, if you guys got an opinion, leave a comment and tell us what you think. These are just a little cooler, a little lower. I got a funky double riser set up there. I'm not sure if I'm using, but comfortable. Just right where you wanna be. One of the best parts I found at the meet. We're talking Rhino bags. We're talking Flanders handlebars. We got original seats, cool knucklehead drag racing exhaust. Look at this. Original cat eye dash. Excuse me, Skull Dash. It's, this is a Cat Eye Dash. So, little Harley lesson for you guys. Uh, both of these incredibly rare original pieces um, came out with a knucklehead, all new styling in 36. Um, they ran this dash from 36 to 38. It's what they call a Skull Dash. Impossible to find. I'm talking impossible to find. This thing looks like it would bolt right on. Um, it's got old black paint on it. It's not original paint, but it's got old black paint. This little hole, I think this hole here would be made like me, like 1938, 37. Um, and then the 39 dash, they put the slot in here. Now it's a whole different shape. This is what we call a cat eye dash. So cat eye dash, a little longer in front, skull dash shorter, speedo. Uh, these, they had uh, generator light, oil pressure light. 
36 and 7 amp gauge, oil pressure gauge. And then in 38, they went to the lights in that same deal. When I found this one, it was like, how can my day get any better? And then I found this one, which is old original chrome from my pal Mike Lang. Uh, fixed me up on a killer deal. Um, beautiful chain guard that our pal Larry Medwig makes. Larry's the ace, sheet metal restorer, does fenders, uh, remakes these chain guards. Really rare stuff. Three rivets is the early type, I think 1938, 39. Hard stuff to find. Comiskey fender on it, fender tip. Short knurled Eaton gas caps. They got the uh, insignia there from Eaton. You can see all the old original uh, rust has got the, still got the washers inside of there. They're pretty dried out and nasty. But these, like 36 to 39 only. I saw them on my pal's table, Jason, uh, uh, Jason Sheets, and immediately thought of this bike. Parts like those, you don't find so some of these other parts are going on this new project that we're just getting ready to show you guys um now these another harley lesson guys so when you're looking for reproduction parts and real parts so these all came in a pile of stuff i got them all three together didn't even know what i was getting uh, at the time it was all in a bin and there's Gr just great pieces as it is okay this is a reproduction six inch air cleaner by ted cycle it says 1939 new york world's fair so when you see one like this you know it's new and you know it's reproduced this one a little bit tougher to tell and this one here has harley davidson motorcycles on it but it's kind of got some new chrome on it it doesn't look like an original one. There's a little bit different of a bend here. So when you're looking at the profile of how this peels off, um, it's just not the way that they made the original ones. But one of the things I noticed about this is it's got this tag on it that's undoubtedly original. It's very heavily worn copper and you can't even hardly read the letters there. So I'm like looking around and feeling around thinking, where did this even come from? Now the third, the six inch knucklehead air cleaner is like one of the most desirable Harley Davidson parts anywhere. You remember the thing about accessories is they didn't put them on every bike. So, um, so I'm digging around and I see this one and we got two reproduction ones so I wasn't expecting a whole lot. And then I peeled this out and about lost it. This is an original six inch Harley Davidson uh, accessory air cleaner. Like I said, one of the rarest Harley Davidson parts that there is. And when I was telling you guys about the bend, you can see that difference in the profile there. Do you see it? How at one side, the black one peels over a little sooner right here. Um, when you look at the two, the one's a little deeper, the chrome one's a little deeper. Great part. These things are a couple hundred bucks, even reproduced. This is priceless. I'm telling you guys, when I saw this, I absolutely flipped out. One of those things that just makes your heart beat fast. I have the perfect project for this inside. This one here might, no. This is going inside on a bike that's already finished. It's been needing one of these for years. So yeah, plastic bags everywhere, guys. But that's the sort of stuff we completely flip out over. More more uh, original and, and reproduction parts for projects we're working on. Fork springs, um, headlight visor. This is a new best available headlight visor we're gonna be putting on the new project. So the project at hand, guys, when I was there, I was running up and down the aisles. It's like six in the morning, 5.45 in the morning. When you're at the swap, first thing you do, you set the alarm early, you get up as early as you can, and you start browsing the field. This 1948 Panhead was sitting right there. Now, I just sold a motor, really rare engine. Uh, so I kind of was already knew I was gonna be going on a shopping spree, and that's why we picked up a lot of those ultra rare parts. Um, you know, when you see them, you got to spring for them. Uh, when you do what we do, that's the stuff that you look for. Now the 48 here, this bike, we're going to be bringing back to life on the Kickstar challenge. So, uh, 1948 last year, Springer fork, 
first year for the Harley Davidson panhead engine. So panhead engine, as many of you guys know, uh, 1948 to 65. Uh, it's one of the most really kind of yeah, famous and and uh, recognizable Harleys ever produced. Now this is a completely intact 1947. It's got tons of cool accessories. I was showing you guys the Flanders bars. There's all these super cool like bumpers and fender rails, fender trim. You got the the front fender light, spotlights. These are the tall guide uh, SH2 with the look at this. This is, this is the Moto Nerd stuff here. You've got the switch in back, got the screw in back. Those are the ones that you want to find. Really cool, rare stuff. Disc wheel down in front. So this is actually a wheel cover, a uh, Harley Davidson part. Uh, this is a wheel cover that goes over your spoked wheel. So and then you've got the hub cap on top of that. Front and rear crash guards. Ultra cool, tall buddy seat. This is like probably mid 50s, really tall. They didn't come out with these until mid 50s or so. Probably say 54, 55, 56. Tail gunner lights, cool saddlebags that are all dolled up. Uh, aftermarket pipe, probably like a buco pipe or something like that. Rear bumper, fender trim rails. It doesn't look like it's missing anything. Now, he told me the bike ran. I don't know if it ran or not. Uh, or I don't know why it's not running now. He told me the bike ran at one point. We're gonna see if we can get this thing fired back up. We're gonna find out if we were gypped or not gypped. It's one of those things. You see a bike in this sort of shape and it's willing to, you know, it's, it's the type of bike you're, you know, I'm willing to take a chance on something that looks this nice. But at the same time, we get engine problems, we get transmission problems. You open up a can of worms that might cost you, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours to fix. And all of a sudden, the deal I got on this bike may turn out to be not such a good deal. So we're going to find all that out. Uh, over the next couple weeks. You guys tune in, make sure uh, you follow along on that process. Ought to be fun to do. You can't beat a panhead. I mean, the 50 over there, it's like one of the finds of the year for us here at the museum. This thing's gonna be on display all year. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you come check that out when you visit. Tune in to the rebuild of this one or the revival of this one. It's gonna be a fun project. And uh, yeah, you guys end up finding cool skull dashes. Or Cat Eye Dash's six inch air cleaner. Call the museum. And uh, yeah, guys, super great, great haul. Couldn't ask for anything better. Wasi on Antique Bike Meet. We'll see you next time.